The following is a presentation of Tomorrow's World. 17,000 runners had completed the famous Boston Marathon. Many more marathoners were completing their run when terror struck. On April 15, 2013, two explosions near the finish line rocked the famous Boston Marathon. More than 260 were injured, many losing body parts, including legs. The Boston Herald newspaper featured the headline, Terror at the Finish Line. Three people were killed, including an eight-year-old boy. Since 9-11, when 3,000 were killed in the terrorist attack of the New York Twin Towers and the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., nations have increased security at airports and public buildings and transport. But when will wars, conflicts, and terrorism come to an end? Will we ever see the emergence of world peace within and among nations? Will we see more terrorist attacks? What does Bible prophecy reveal about the future? My friends, you need to understand prophetic trends in our world. You need to be prepared for the future. The Bible reveals key events, trends, and our ultimate future. How can you understand Bible prophecy? There are keys to understanding Bible mysteries and predictions. And there is a master key to Bible prophecy. That master key is described in our revealing free booklet titled, the United States and Great Britain in Prophecy. Be sure to request your free copy. My friends, what is the master key to Bible prophecy? You need to know. Stay tuned. greetings to all our friends around the world. Bible prophecy reveals the future for the world. Your Bible predicts a glorious future beyond the wars, oppression, and lawlessness we see around the world. Where are we in Bible prophecy? The greatest prophet who ever lived, Jesus of Nazareth, described the end times in his famous Olivet Prophecy in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21. My friends, we're living in the prophetic period of time called, in your Bible, the end time. We see the signs all around the world. Nine nations are known to have nuclear weapons, weapons of mass destruction. North Korea has even threatened nuclear war. The weapons of terrorism killed nearly 3,000 in the New York Twin Towers and the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. The London subway bombings on July 7, 2005 which killed 52 and wounded more than 700. And the April 15, 2013 bombings of the Boston Marathon, which killed three and injured more than 260. What penalties will we continue to suffer nationally and individually? God states in Leviticus 26, verse 16, I will even appoint terror over you, wasting disease and fever, which shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And you shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. I will set my face against you, and you shall be defeated by your enemies. Those who hate you shall reign over you, and you shall flee when no one pursues you. Why? To learn the answer, you need to know the framework of Bible prophecy. Jesus revealed end-time events in the book of Revelation. The famous four horsemen of the apocalypse symbolize devastation and deception. You can read about them in Revelation 6, verses 1 through 8. The beast of Revelation 13, rising up out of the sea, has seven heads and ten horns. The beast of Revelation 17, which rises out of a bottomless pit, also has seven heads and ten horns. But this beast is ridden by a harlot. The Apostle John writes what he sees in vision, Revelation 17, verse 5. And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. How can we understand these mysterious symbols and images? What are the principles for understanding Bible prophecy? On today's program, we'll answer those questions. 
and we'll give you five keys to understand Bible prophecy. We'll also offer you an exciting free booklet that will help you in your study of Bible prophecy. It's titled, The United States and Great Britain in Prophecy. This free booklet will give you greater understanding of Bible prophecy than you've ever had before. It will give you the master key to Bible prophecy. Be sure to write down the address and phone number to order your free copy. Just ask for the booklet on prophecy. You would also order this free booklet on our website at tomorrowsworld.org. Our first key to understanding Bible prophecy is the Bible interprets its own symbols. Let's take a look at an example of biblical symbols. You're probably familiar with the account of King Nebuchadnezzar's dream in Daniel chapter 2. The prophet Daniel was called before King Nebuchadnezzar, and he proceeded to describe the great image in the king's dream. Daniel 2 and verse 31. You, O king, were watching, and behold a great image. This great image, whose splendor was excellent, stood before you, and its form was awesome. This image's head was of fine gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. You watched while a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. What did this statue symbolize? Daniel told King Nebuchadnezzar that he was the head of gold represented in the image. Daniel said to King Nebuchadnezzar in chapter 2, verse 38, You are this head of gold. History confirms Daniel's interpretation of the subsequent empires symbolized by the statue. That empire was replaced by the Medo-Persian Empire from 558 to 330 BC, represented by the chest and arms of silver. The belly and thighs of bronze represented the Greco-Macedonian Empire of Alexander the Great from 333 to 31 BC. The two legs of iron represent the Roman Empire from 31 BC to 476 AD. And finally, the ten toes on two feet of iron mixed with ceramic clay represent a future revival of the Roman Empire. Daniel's prophecy revealed four historical world-ruling empires. History confirms that the predictions of these four empires did come to pass. The prophet Daniel revealed the symbolism of the image's head of gold. He told Nebuchadnezzar, you are this head of gold. Our first key to understanding Bible prophecy is, the Bible interprets its own symbols. The second vital key to recognize what we call prophetic time gaps. We'll discuss this in the next part of our program. But first, I'd like to offer you our free informative booklet titled, The United States and Great Britain in Prophecy. What does Bible prophecy predict for the future of these great nations? One of the greatest principles for understanding Bible prophecy is to know where in the Bible such nations are mentioned. Nations such as the United States, Canada, Great Britain, Australia, and New Zealand. You need to know the biblical origin of these nations. Most theologians and preachers are way off base in their prophetic frameworks because they lack that knowledge. Our free booklet, The United States and Great Britain in Prophecy, gives you that vital information. This booklet will give you the historic and biblical proof of the prophecies relating to these countries. Major prophetic events are outlined in this booklet. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free booklet, The United States and Great Britain in Prophecy. Just ask for the booklet on prophecy. You can also order this free booklet on our website at tomorrowsworld.org, or you can write to us at one of our regional addresses. And if you're not already a subscriber to our bi-monthly magazine, Tomorrow's World, we'll send you a free subscription. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the deeper meaning of life itself. Be sure to request Tomorrow's World magazine. There's no cost or obligation. And be sure to request your free booklet, The United States and Great Britain in Prophecy. To request today's free informative offer, visit us on the internet at tomorrowsworld.org. Go to tomorrowsworld.org. In the first part of our program, we saw that the Bible interprets its own symbols. Key number one for understanding Bible prophecy is the Bible interprets its own symbols. Key number two is 
recognize prophetic time gaps. Let's look at an example in Luke 4, verse 16. Jesus was visiting His hometown of Nazareth and was invited to read from the Scriptures on the Sabbath. He was given the scroll of Isaiah, Luke 4, verses 16 through 21. So He came to Nazareth where He had been brought up, and as His custom was, He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah, Luke 4, verse 17. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Now notice this. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Jesus closed the book he was reading right in the middle of a verse. He omitted the second part of the verse referring to the day of vengeance. Why? Because the remainder of Isaiah's prophecy applies to Jesus' second coming when the day of the Lord, the day of God's vengeance and wrath, takes place. My friends, there's a time gap of about 2,000 years between the fulfillment of the first part of the verse and the second part of the verse. Key number two for understanding Bible prophecy was to recognize prophetic time gaps. Key number three to understanding Bible prophecy is learn God's prophetic framework. This is a major key for understanding Bible prophecy. This is a key that relatively few professing Christians know. There are many different ideas and scenarios regarding Bible prophecy. You may have heard of postmillennialism and amillennialism. These teach wrongly that Jesus Christ will return after the prophesied millennium or that He will not return at all. The truth is what we call premillennialism, the teaching that Christ will return to set up a literal kingdom here on earth for a literal period of 1,000 years. The book of Revelation describes a period of three and a half years leading up to the return of Christ. The first five seals of Revelation, outlined in chapter 6, cover a period of two and a half years of the Great Tribulation. Jesus spoke about that in Matthew 24. The sixth seal is those heavenly signs. The whole world will be put on notice when this event occurs. Let's read that in Revelation, the sixth chapter, starting with verse 12. Revelation 6, verse 12. The Apostle John writes, I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth, as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, Listen to this, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. We pointed out three major milestones that give us the prophetic framework leading up to the return of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. They are, number one, the Great Tribulation, number two, the Heavenly Signs, and three, the Day of the Lord. These three events cover a period of about three and one half years. There are over 30 prophecies in your Bible referring to the day of the Lord. Isaiah 34, 8 and Isaiah 63, 4 show that the day of the Lord in end time prophecy, the time preceding the second coming, is a period of one year. You might want to write down those references, Isaiah 34, 8 and Isaiah 63, 4. We should all look forward to the return of Christ. We need to be spiritually preparing for that soon coming event. As you can see, the Bible gives us an overall framework for prophecy. You need to understand that framework. Key number three for understanding Bible prophecy, learn God's prophetic framework. We'll discuss vital key number four in the next part of our program. But first I'd like to offer you an amazing free booklet that reveals major prophetic trends and events in the future. It's titled, The United States and Great Britain in Prophecy. My friends, you can know the future of America, Britain, and Western civilization. Bible prophecy reveals what historians, world leaders, and political analysts do not know and cannot know. 
but you can understand. Where are the United States, Great Britain, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand mentioned in Bible prophecy? What are the biblical origins of these nations? This free booklet will give you the answers. You need this vital key to understanding Bible prophecy. You need the master key to Bible prophecy. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free copy of the United States and Great Britain in Prophecy. There's no cost or obligation. Just ask for the booklet on prophecy. You would also order this booklet on our website at tomorrowsworld.org or you can write to us at one of our regional addresses. You can also find us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at Tomorrow's World. To request today's free informative offer, visit us on the internet at tomorrowsworld.org. Go to tomorrowsworld.org. Bible prophecy reveals the future and the good news of God's coming kingdom. You need to understand what lies ahead. On today's program, we've discussed three vital principles of prophecy. Key number one to understanding Bible prophecy, the Bible interprets its own symbols. Key number two, recognize prophetic time gaps. Key number three, learn God's prophetic framework. Of course, for any of this to make sense to us, we need apply a fourth vital biblical key, understand the purpose of Bible prophecy. My friends, let's understand. Bible prophecy warns people and nations to repent so they can avoid punishment. John the Baptist was baptizing massive crowds of people who were moved by his preaching. The Gospel writer Matthew describes what happened. Matthew 3, verse 1. In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus Christ later on preached the same message. You can read that in Mark 1, verses 14 and 15. And what was the response to John's preaching? Matthew 3, verse 5. Then Jerusalem, all Judea, and all the region around the Jordan went out to him and were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. On the day of Pentecost in 31 A.D., the Apostle Peter exhorted the thousands in his audience to repent and be baptized. You can read that in Acts 2, verse 38. Peter motivated the crowd to change their lives. He said in Acts 2, verses 40 through 41, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. Key number four to understanding Bible prophecy is understand the purpose of Bible prophecy. Key number five is the master key to Bible prophecy. Key number five for understanding Bible prophecy, know the biblical origin of nations. This is the master key to Bible prophecy. My friends, can you find the United States, Canada, Great Britain, and the other English-speaking nations in Bible prophecy? If you can, you will understand major parts of vital prophecies that very few today can even begin to comprehend. Where is the United States mentioned in the Bible? Or under what name can we locate it? Where can we find Great Britain in the Bible? Obviously, the modern names do not appear, but the ancestors of those nations are prominently named in the Bible. Now, the Bible does mention such nations as Egypt, Libya, and Ethiopia. And it may surprise you that Assyria will eventually be one of the prominent nations in tomorrow's world, along with Egypt and Israel. You can read about that in Isaiah 19, verse 23. Also read the 10th and 11th chapters of Isaiah. But my friends, who is modern Assyria? Several years ago, in our Tomorrow's World magazine, we previously published an article on this subject. Listen carefully. Quote, Germany's cultural history and national character resemble Assyria's like no other nation. When the Bible speaks of Assyria in the end times, it is speaking of Germany. No other modern nation fits the description so completely. My friends, you can begin to understand much more about end-time prophecy when you have the accurate knowledge of the modern descendants of ancient biblical nations. Key number five for understanding Bible prophecy is to know the biblical origin of nations. We must understand that there were two ancient kingdoms, the two-tribe southern kingdom of Judah and the ten-tribe kingdom of Israel. Listen to this. Amazing as it may seem, the first time the word Jews is mentioned in the King James Version of your Bible, 
they are at war with Israel. In the conclusion of our program, we'll explain that seeming contradiction. But first, I'd like to offer you an amazing free booklet that will identify the Western nations in your own Bible. This free booklet gives you the master key to Bible prophecy. It's titled, The United States and Great Britain in Prophecy. Where are the United States, Great Britain, Canada, South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand mentioned in Bible prophecy? What are the biblical origins of these nations? This free booklet will give you the answers. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free copy of The United States and Great Britain in Prophecy. There's no cost or obligation. And you can also order this booklet on our website at tomorrowsworld.org. Or you can write to us at one of our regional addresses. To request today's free informative offer, visit us on the internet at tomorrowsworld.org. Go to tomorrowsworld.org. My friends, do you realize that your Bible shows Israel and Judah fighting each other? Read it for yourself in 2 Kings, the 16th chapter in the King James Version. The house of Israel was allied with Syria against the kingdom of Judah. 2 Kings 16, verses 5 and 6. Then Rezan, king of Syria, and Pekah, son of Remaliah, king of Israel, came up to Jerusalem to war. And they besieged Ahaz, the king of Judah, but could not overcome him. At that time, Rezan, king of Syria, recovered Ailoth to Syria and drove the Jews from Ailoth. And the Syrians came to Ailoth and dwelt there to this day. That's in the King James Version. After the reign of King Solomon over both Israel and Judah, God allowed the house of Israel to detach itself from Judah. The capital of the northern kingdom, Israel, was Samaria, and Jerusalem was the capital of the southern kingdom, Judah. Over the following years, God sent prophets warning the northern kingdom of Israel to repent of its idolatry and wickedness. Israel refused to humble itself, and God sent the whole nation into Assyrian captivity in 721 B.C. The kingdom of Judah later followed Israel's example of idolatry, and God sent them into Babylonian captivity, emphasized by the destruction of Jerusalem in 586 B.C. This map shows the movements of the two kingdoms in their captivity. After 70 years' captivity, God allowed Judah to return to Jerusalem and the Holy Land. Now in the end time, the house of Judah established the modern nation called Israel in 1948. Bible students know that this historic development sets the stage for major end time prophecies. But what happened to the ten tribes after their Assyrian captivity in 721 BC? The kingdom of Israel became known as the ten lost tribes of Israel. Their migrations are recorded throughout history. But what was their origin? The great prophecies given to the sons of Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh, had been fulfilled in these past two centuries. You can read those prophecies in Genesis 48. In verse 16, Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, blessed his grandsons, Ephraim and Manasseh. Israel blessed them, saying, Let my name, the name Israel, be named on them. My friends, who are the descendants of Ephraim and Manasseh? Their descendants down through history eventually became the peoples of America and Great Britain. Other descendants of the ten lost tribes can be identified in the nations of Northwest Europe. You can learn more about this amazing history and the migration of the ten lost tribes of Israel in our amazing, inspiring free booklet, The United States and Great Britain in Prophecy. On today's program, we discuss five keys to understanding prophecy. Key number five for understanding Bible prophecy is know the biblical origin of nations. My friends, we need to repent nationally and individually of our sins, selfishness, rebellion, and idolatry. As you will read in our free booklet on page 38, quote, the United States and Great Britain and all the British descended peoples are on the rendezvous with God's judgment, end of quote. Bible prophecy reveals a forthcoming great tribulation for our rebellious nations. But Bible prophecy also reveals a glorious tomorrow's world once we've learned some painful and lasting lessons. May God grant you the understanding of His awesome plan of salvation and His promise of protection for those who repent and humble themselves before it's too late. 
You can learn more about our awesome future and how to prepare for the prophetic times ahead. Be sure to request our amazing, inspiring free booklet, The United States and Great Britain in Prophecy. It will open your eyes to Bible prophecy and give you wonderful understanding, truth, and knowledge from your own Bible. We invite you to join us every week on Tomorrow's World. Roderick Meredith and I will continue to share with you the teachings of Jesus Christ and the exciting end-time prophecies and their meaning. We invite you to join our colleagues, Wallace Smith and Rod King, who will also share with you the awesome truths of the Bible, the deeper meaning of life, and the prophecies of tomorrow's world. Be sure to join us again next week, right here at the same time. To view the Tomorrow's World telecast or request today's free offer, visit us online at tomorrowsworld.org. And remember to find us on Facebook and be sure to follow us on Twitter. The preceding program is produced by the Living Church of God.